So Niao. Uh, my name is Laurent and I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I will have to speak English. Uh, so hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so I will use uh, English for this presentation, but um, I know that here uh, people use traditional Chinese, but I have to use uh, simplified English uh, for this presentation. So, uh, so my name is Laurent. I'm a software hacker, so I write uh, uh, code, and also I'm a company founder. So I, I uh, know a business person. So you might wonder, uh, how can you be a software hacker and a company founder at the same time? So you have to do programming and then uh, business at the same time. So you cannot do uh, both at the same time. You need to do half, 50% programming and 50% uh, business development. So this is what um, people look like when they do uh, programming and business. Um, I have been a Ruby programmer since uh, 2002. I discovered Ruby with a um, pickaxe book that Matt was talking about yesterday. Uh, I remember it was, it was free on the internet, so you could go on rubycentral.com. And uh, I was uh, also working for Apple for um, until three years ago, between 2004 and 2012, so uh, eight years. And I work on um, a lot of things from uh, iCal, iSync, iLife06, uh, all the uh, OS 10 releases from uh, Tiger, um, Leopard, Snow Leopard, Lion, Mountain Lion. Uh, I also created the MacRuby project when I was working at Apple. It was an implementation of Ruby. And after 2012, I created a, a company called Hipbyte, and we do Ruby Motion. This is uh, all I do right now. So it's much simpler, just one thing. Um, so I'm from Belgium. Uh, and um, recently there was um, a demonstration in Belgium because of farmers. Farmers are uh, complaining that uh, they cannot sell their product. So uh, there are always demonstrations in Belgium because it's uh, headquarters of European Union. And uh, this picture was taken. So how do you know that this is from Belgium? Uh, if you look more closely, the Cup is wearing a, a waffle while he's uh, spraying the demonstrators. <laughs> well, this is my country, right? So I, I'm also the founder of RubyBullet.rb, which is the Ruby user group of my hometown. So we meet once every three months and we discuss Ruby and we, we hit Bullet. If you're ever in Belgium, uh, just as a tourist, uh, please send me a message and if you want to eat uh, this, this uh, specialty. Uh, these are, uh, this is a picture of the specialty. These are meatballs and fries. Also, I'm the founder of Orval.club, an association of people who strongly believe that Orval is the best beer of the world. Uh, uh, and this is the website uh, which I created a few um, months ago. I didn't change it. Anyway, so the agenda for today, we talk about Ruby Motion. Then we'll do some live coding. I will uh, write uh, two apps. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. And then we do some questions. So let's start with RubyMotion. RubyMotion is basically um, a way to do mobile development using the Ruby language. And before, do, before talking about mobile development, we, we should probably talk about the, the state of mobile development. Um, um, some of you might not be familiar. So if you're familiar with mobile development, you know that there are uh, basically two platforms, uh, iOS and Android, right? And this is um, screenshots from the latest versions on both platforms. I think this is iOS 8 and Android uh, uh, 5.0, if I'm not mistaken. So they pretty much look alike these days. Um, by the way, I'm not sure if Apple products are legal in Taiwan, um, because I was on the subway and I saw this picture. Uh, <laughs> so can you, can you wear? No, I'm joking. Anyway, so this is really iOS and Android. and. Um, so these are numbers I took from the internet. Uh, this is part of my business uh, role, right? <laughs> so I built this graph using Keynote and uh, interesting. So if basically the red, uh, the green, sorry, is iOS and the blue is Android and you have the market share for each platform. Uh, oh, we don't see the dates, forgot to put the dates. But the first one is 2001, 2002, sorry, 2002, 2013, 2014, 2015. So the last one is actually this year. Uh, 
So as you can see, Android has most of the market share for smartphones, and uh, and I, actually iOS is growing since last year. So anyway, uh, if you do an application, a mobile application, you cannot just do an application for iOS. Uh, you need to do uh, cross-platform applications because you want your app to work on Android as well. So this is important. And you also need to do uh, an application that is native. It is also all very important. So there are, there are many toolkits, many compilers available that will let you write apps. And some of them are web-based, uh, for instance, PhoneGap or React Native. I know that I'm always asked this question, so which is why I prepared this very specific slide. So uh, if you compare web-based uh, apps, apps that are made, for instance, with PhoneGap or React Native and native apps, you can see that uh, it is easier to get started with web-based development frameworks because you just use HTML and JavaScript and you don't need to, the learning curve is very low. But it's hard to get started with native apps. It's a completely new environment. Uh, but with web-based apps, you cannot access all the platform features naturally. Uh, so um, the toolchain has to create bridges and to wrap all these platform native APIs into something that JavaScript can use. So you have to use all these bindings and you cannot call everything naturally, which is an issue because sometimes there are features that are not available or sometimes Apple is releasing a new version or iOS and it's not wrapped yet, so you have to wait. Uh, of course, with native apps, everything is accessible. Uh, Web-based apps have low performance compared to native apps because normally the code is written in JavaScript, so it means that it's interpreted at runtime. Uh, the V8 video machine, for instance, uses uh, just-in-time compilation. Uh, uh, it just does a, a one-pass compilation of your program. And it runs on only one thread, so you cannot use multi-threading. Of course, with native apps, uh, it, it has much better performance because this is machine code and you, have, you can create as many threads as you want. So at the end, with web-based apps, it is hard to provide a good user experience. If you want an app that really behaves well, that really accesses all the platform features, it is really hard. You can do it, but it's a lot of work. While it is much easier to do that uh, with a native uh, uh, tool chain. So at the end, the problem uh, is definitely this. Um, if you want to provide a good user experience, uh, native tool chains are uh, the best way to do that. Native apps provide the best user experience. And at the end, uh, you want satisfied customers, people who like using your, uh, your app. Consumers, they really want the best user experience. A lot of Facebook, for instance, was using web-based uh, toolkit for a long time and people complained that the application was very slow, that didn't work when there was no network, uh, that it, it didn't feel uh, as good as the other apps be installed. So eventually, Facebook decided to use a native tool chain. So native apps are harder to make, but consumers don't care about this. They don't care about how hard is it to make. They just want it, right? So at the end, the customer is uh, after the programmer. Uh, so if you're a programmer, you need to work for the customer. So what about the platform architecture? So iOS, if you want to build apps for iOS, uh, you have four layers of API. Uh, the first one is uh, CoreOS. It's mainly the kernel, BSD, and userland. You normally don't don't use these APIs when you uh, do apps. The second layer is core services. These are low-level frameworks that are used to build the rest of iOS. So you will usually use this layer. For instance, the string, the string class, the array class is defined in this layer. The media layer contains uh, the UI kit framework, which is the biggest one. It has all the widget classes, for instance, uh, windows, buttons, navigation controllers. There, are, there is also audio and video API at this layer. And eventually at the top, you have like extra frameworks that you can use to provide more features to your apps. For instance, if you want to access the address book or do something with the game kit uh, service, you can use this layer. And so you only use the three first layers. Uh, and they are all, they all provide APIs, mostly in Objective-C. Uh, they are also C APIs. So it's basically a, a C-level API. Objective-C and C are uh, very similar languages. And if you do uh, IS development, you need to use Xcode, which is an IDE written by Apple. So they, they ask you to use that. So you basically have to learn Objective-C and C, the APIs, and use Xcode. And you want your app to work for Android as well, right? So you need to develop for Android. For Android, there are four similar layers. And the first one is 
Linux, you don't use it as well. This, this is pretty much for drivers. Uh, the core libraries are uh, C-based libraries that are used to implement the rest of the Android SDK. So unless you do uh, NDK development in C, you don't need uh, this layer. And you only need the last two layers, the GDK, which is the implementation of Java from Google, and the Android classes, everything that Apple defines in Java. So you need the last two layers, and it's all Java. It's 100% Java APIs. So you need to learn Java, and you need to learn all these APIs. And also, you need to use Android Studio, which is much better than the previous IDE they had, um, uh, Eclipse. Uh, so this is an improvement. But it's still an IDE that you have to uh, learn and discover. So at the end, if you do native development and you target both iOS and Android, you have on the iOS side, you need to pick a language, Objective-C or Swift. They are both able to call into the Objective-C and C APIs of iOS. On Android, you pick Java. Uh, when it comes to the environment, you use Xcode for iOS and Android Studio for Android. So you have two IDEs. And in terms of API, you have the iOS APIs on iOS and the Android APIs on Android. So basically, you need to uh, toggle between languages and IDEs and APIs. So can we make this simpler? And this, this is, of course, possible with RubyMotion, right? Uh, RubyMotion is basically a tool chain to write uh, native mobile apps in Ruby. And native is very important, so I uh, underlined it. Uh, it's uh, cross-platform, so for iOS and Android, and also OS X, watchOS, and very soon the, the Apple TV. Uh, and it is designed for uh, Ruby programmers. So we really uh, designed RubyMotion for the uh, for the day lives of Ruby programmers because we are Ruby programmers. And the main idea is to provide a consistent experience when you write cross-platform uh, mobile apps and mobile native apps. So if we go back to this table here, uh, again, you can see there are two different languages, two different IDE, and two different set of APIs. And the idea of RubyMotion is to replace the first uh, two rows. So instead of using Objective-C, Swift, and Java, you use Ruby. Ruby everywhere. Ruby as a language. And instead of using Xcode and Android Studio, you use your own editor, the editor you already like, and the terminal. And you will notice that uh, we don't provide uh, wrappers, uh, cross-platform wrappers at this, at this stage. So you need to call the iOS APIs on iOS and the Android APIs on Android. Because we believe that uh, we, um, the, the best applications are the application that makes use of really the native functionality. And the only way to do that is to call the native APIs. So this is a layer that you will have to learn. So it doesn't really make mobile development extremely easy. There is still a learning curve. You need to learn about iOS development and Android development. But it makes your life much easier because you use the same language. You can share code. Most of the code that uh, in, your, in a typical application, more, more than half, maybe 70%, is just pure Ruby code. It's, not, it's code that doesn't go into the iOS APIs. This code can be copy-pasted in 400. It just works. So it makes, porting, uh, it makes the creation of native apps, uh, cross-platform apps, uh, much easier than using uh, Objective-C and, and Java. And to support that, we basically have a unified run Ruby runtime. We have custom implementation of the Ruby language for uh, each platform. Uh, for iOS, we re-implemented the Ruby language on top of the same runtime that powers Objective-C. So it's basically a new implementation of Ruby. It doesn't use the traditional implementation of Ruby. And this is based on the MacRuby project. Um, so basically, uh, all the Ruby, uh, the Ruby object model, like classes, methods, and objects, are actually uh, using the same runtime that powers Objective-C. So all, all Ruby classes are actually Objective-C classes, and vice versa. When you use RubyMotion for iOS, everything that Apple defines in Objective-C is automatically available in Ruby, because we use the same runtime. And for Android, we did the same thing. We re-implemented Ruby on top of uh, the Java Vita machine uh, and uh, the Android runtimes. So there are two runtimes in Android, Dalvik and Art. Art is the new one. And Basically, we did the same thing as we did for iOS. So everything that you do in RubyMotion for Android is actually Java, Java classes, Java objects, and Java methods. And all the Java APIs, you can use them in Ruby, naturally. So there is no bridging. We don't have to provide wrappers. And when iOS and iOS Android have updates, like they introduce new APIs, they are automatically supported in RubyMotion. So this is the iOS uh, typical Hello World. 
and this is a lot of lines, but these are basically, uh, if, you, if you had to write this in Swift or Objective-C, it would be exactly the same. Uh, we are using the same Objective-C classes and the same Objective-C methods to basically uh, create a UI view controller, a UI color, uh, and create a window and put the controller in the window and show the window on screen. So this is a this is a one-to-one -one mapping, but it, this is using Ruby as you can see. So this is pretty something you can read. Uh, and when you type uh, rake on your project, you get this uh, simulator window. For Android, this is Hello World. It's much simpler. And again, what you what you see here is a direct mapping of the Java APIs. So if you had to write this in Java, it would be mostly the same. Ruby is, um, is uh, less verbose than Java. Java would be maybe twice this uh, this snippet, but uh, it's basically the same. So there are no wrappers. There is no magic here. This is basically the Java Android API that we go from Ruby. And if you use a fast emulator, which I recommend, uh, you can get a little Ruby motion on the your uh, Android emulator. A different uh, different aspect, of course, of Ruby motion is it has static compilation. So uh, Ruby. Ruby code is compiled into machine code ahead of time. So we don't have an interpreter and we don't do JIT compilation. So when you when you create an application, we will generate a binary. So we'll compile ahead of time statically your Ruby code into machine code. So it's, this is very important. Uh, there is no interpreter in Ruby motion apps. There are no .rb files. Everything in, is compiled into machine code. Exact same process as uh, Objective-C and Swift. Uh, Java is different. Java is a bytecode interpreter. Even if the, with the art runtime, it compiles to machine code. So for iOS, you get a native executable. And for Android, we create a GNI a native library that we load inside the application. So the original Ruby source code is not present in the application. This is really machine code. And the apps created by RubyMotion, normally they just wait a few megabytes. So they are very, very uh, small. So as you can see, RubyMotion is not PhoneGap. Uh, it is a bit different. Um, and one last thing about RubyMotion, there's a command line interface. So as I said, you use your terminal and then any editor you like. It can be Vim, Sublime, TextMate, RubyMine, Emacs. Uh, personally, use Vim because I'm, I've been brainwashed when I, when I was at university. But you can use any editor you want. And when you create projects, you use the motion create uh, command on your terminal. So you type motion create uh, template. You choose the type of project you want to create, iOS, Android, OS 10, and then the name of a project, and it will create a directory for you. So as you can see, you don't use Xcode or Android Studio. You never use them. You use the command line, the command line for everything. So as soon as you do that, you can go there, and you can check the rec file. And the, all the entire project configuration is in the rec file. So you don't have to use, again, your mouse and clicking into Xcode Nightmare, figure it out, the build settings. Everything is in the rec file. And by default, all the project configuration is generated for you. And if you type rec config, you see the entire project, and you can change it. You can provide modifications. And there are, there are, there are many rec tasks for you. Um, the default rate tags will generate um, your app and launch it in the simulator on the, or the uh, Android emulator. And if you want to deploy on your device, you just connect your device to your Mac and you type rate device. And the application is uh, compiled for the device, sent to the device, and then executed. And you can see in real time what's happening. And when you're ready to make uh, money, right, you generate uh, packages. So for iOS and for Android, you have special tasks that will generate uh, the same packages that would, would be generated by Xcode or Android Studio. You take this on, uh, for iOS, these are IPA packages, and for Android, these are uh, APK. They are basically zip files that contain the application. And you can take this and drag, drag this into the application uh, submission form for Apple or uh, Google. And once, one last thing, uh, if you really like, if you really need help with RubyMotion, uh, we highly recommend RubyMine. Uh, if you need some assistance, uh, for instance, if you need an IDE. RubyMine is great. Uh, it has a very smart auto-completion. So as soon as you start typing stuff, it will let you, it will propose you to complete methods. It is very, very smart. It has also built-in documentation. Uh, you can also have uh, refactoring uh, methods for you. Uh, finally, you have, a, you have a debugger, so you can use with your mouse 
do point and click in your source code, set breakpoints, and then it will break uh, on the simulator and on the device. So this is good for development. And you can also do a test-driven development in RubyMine. So there is a there is a testing suite as part of RubyMotion, and you can write tests and you can run tests. So if you want to know more about the RubyMotion RubyMine integration, you can go on the JetBrains uh, website uh, slash Ruby slash RubyMotion. They, they have a special web page for RubyMotion. They describe all the features. And finally, there are gems uh, for RubyMotion. Uh, the same gems as you would use for um, Rails, Ruby on Rails, or all the Ruby projects. Uh, and gems in RubyMotion are basically, they are mostly Ruby DSLs. So the, the, every time someone has something complicated to do for IS on Android, they create a Ruby DSL for it and they create a gem. So then you can use the, the gem and it's much easier. And some of the gems are cross-platform, so they provide a Ruby DSL that works on both IS and Android which is great. And the most common ones are uh, Red Potion and Blue Potion. Uh, these, are, these are pretty meta gems. They are more a set of different gems. And these are providing, trying to provide a common DSL that works on both iOS and Android. And the goal of these gems is to be the race of Ruby Motion. Uh, I'm not working on these gems. The, the community is working on them. But they want to be the race of Ruby Motion. So basically allowing you to write an app in uh, almost pure Ruby. So 100% Ruby, no IS and Android call. And they want to appeal to Rails developers. So if you do Rails development, that might interest you. And this is an example of a, a red potion, I think. It's building an application and a, a screen. It has um, a navigation thing. You can open new screens. and. As you can see, this is pure Ruby here. There is no Java or iOS uh, APIs there. This is pure Ruby. And when you, when you take this and you compile it, you have different implementations for iOS and Android. Oops. Oh, yeah. Breaking news. So uh, there are a few things new in RubyMotion, so we go quick. Uh, RubyMotion starter, uh, free version of RubyMotion. It's free, we released it a few days ago, so you can now download it. Uh, you say free. Uh, free, is it really free? Uh, it's free as in beer. Uh, so it's not open source, it's free. Uh, sure, Storman is not happy. Uh, it's fully featured, so you can do IS and Android development, and there are no restrictions. So you can, do, uh, you can test your app on the simulator, you can submit on the device, you can submit to the app store. Uh, there are no restrictions, there is no expiration, there are no uh, locking mechanisms, so it's just free, you can just download it. Uh, the only thing that, that the free version has is a splash screen. So when you start your app, you will see this uh, splash screen. And uh, if you want to remove it, you need to buy a subscription. This is smart, right? <laughs> anyway, it's free, remotion.com slash download, please download it. So Android M, Android, Android M is the new uh, f uh, API of Android. M stands for ma Marshmallow, I think. Uh, it's 6.0, 6 uh, API level 23. If you want to use it, you can just type API version equal 23. We already support it. So you can download RubyMotion, right? RubyMotion.com slash download. Uh, WatchOS 2.0, uh, WatchOS is the new uh, operating system for the Apple Watch. It now provides a native SDK which is great. It's different from WatchOS 1.0. On one, one, WatchOS 1.0, the application was running on the phone, which was connected to the watch. And on the watch, you, can, you could only have some sort of a view. It didn't really have native APIs. And on WatchOS 2.0, the application that you write are actually running on the watch. And there are many APIs that you can use to build apps for the Apple Watch. So this is a... Uh, this is a video of an Apple Watch app uh, written in Ruby Motion, running on the Apple Watch uh, simulator on the Mac, because it's very hard to take a video on what you do. And this, uh, yeah, this example shows the current rate, the current price of Bitcoin. Uh, this is an old video, so I think B Bitcoin is uh, cheaper now or more expensive. I don't know. If you have investment in Bitcoin, you might want to have this application. So again, RubyMotion.com slash download, right? Uh, motion Game. Motion Game is a new API to create games for iOS and Android. Uh, 
basically you can write cross-platform Ruby games, uh, sorry, cross-platform games in Ruby using a single API. So this is a new feature that we have in Ruby Motion 4. It's fully feature, so we provide API to create uh, particles, parallax, networking. You have, you have, we have the notion of a sync graph. Uh, we have sprites, UI widgets. You can receive sensors from the device. Uh, we have animation and a uh, physics engine. And of course, we didn't write it. We use uh, Cocos 2 dx for that, which is very, very nice. So you, we basically wrote a nice Ruby API on top of Cocos 2 d And the idea is that you write one code base and it compiles to iOS and Android. So this is different from the other Ruby motion. The, for this one, is, this is 100% cross-platform. So just one code base and it works on both platforms. So again, if you want to try it, rubymotion.com slash download. Uh, you can install motion game using gem install motion game after you download Ruby motion, right? So the iPad Pro. Uh, some people ask me uh, support for the iPad Pro. By the way, who wants a stylus, right? <laughs> uh, so iPad Pro is same as regular iPad development. So this is just iOS. Uh, but if, if there are new APIs for iPad Pro, we will support them. So again, rubymotion.com slash download uh, if you want to try iPad Pro development. So OS X L Captain. L Captain. Right, this is a new version of OS X, 10.11. Uh, it was actually released a few days ago uh, as GM Cold Master. So you can install it. Uh, it has been supported in Rubymotion since they announced it at WWDC. So you can use uh, L Rubymotion on L Captain. And you can write El Capitan apps in Ruby Motion. I really have a hard time pronouncing El Capitan. So anyway, if you want to try that, you can download Ruby Motion on rubymotion.com slash download, right? Finally, TVOS. TVOS is native SDK for Apple TV. Uh, Apple released a new version of Apple TV uh, four days ago. Uh, and Apple TV now runs uh, iOS, which is great. Actually, it was running iOS in old versions, but they never talk about it. But the, 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 the good thing about that is that you can now write apps for the uh, Apple TV. And more, more interestingly, you can write games for the Apple TV, which is what you probably want to write. You don't want to write boring apps. And, um, and Apple say that they will support third-party uh, video game controllers for Apple TV. So you can use a real controller instead of the stick, no, the stupid stick. And it was announced three days ago, and so far it's ARM64 based. It's a port of iOS, so you will find all the API that you already know if you do iOS development. It has a simulator for the Mac, and it has a couple of new frameworks as far as we found. So we, we are going to support it. Um, so you can download support on remotion.com slash um, download. Actually, no, this one, I, it's not true. We are still working on it. Uh, so please be patient. Uh, we're working on it a lot, so we'll ship support for Apple TV very soon. Uh, you have to give us uh, some time. Anyway, please don't know Rubymotion, right? Uh, it's free. Uh, if you don't know the address, it's rubymotion.com slash download. Okay, so now we have some time. So let's write some apps. I uh, will show you what, how Rubymotion works. Um, the first app we will write is a boring app. Uh, it's, it's going to be an app that shows the best beer of the world. Um, the best beers of the world, this is very um, subjective, right? So for that, I use just one um, pattern. I use the Trappist beers. So if you don't know what Trappist beers are, they are beers made by uh, Cistercian monks. So um, Cistercian monks are monks from, uh, I think, a sect of the Catholic Church from Europe. And they make beers the old way, and they are—they don't make it for profit. They make it with special ingredients, and it's very—it's uh, a very long process. And if you want to know more about Trappist beers, there is a page on Wikipedia. So you have to type Trappist with two Ps, right? And so far, there are there are 11 Trappist beers in the world. Um, most of them are, are from Belgium, but there are there are two from Netherlands. Uh, one from uh, Austria, one from Italy, and one from uh, America, uh, from um, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, right? But the, the best one is Orval, of course, um, which I highly recommend. 
So the app will be simple, it will be two screens. The first one will be a list of our beers, and the second screen will be a map where you can see where the, these beers are, so you can travel and do some tourism. And we'll use a red potion for this, so we will not use IS APIs, we'll use a Ruby gem to show you how, how this is working. Okay, so uh, I have to switch back in your display. This is my uh, desktop. You know David Hasselhoff, right? Anyway, so um, let's create a new. Okay. Uh, motion create beers. And by default, if you don't pass template argument, it will create IS and IS project. So we do an IS project today uh, because IS is the main target, right? So we go there, and as you can see, this is pretty much what I show you. There is a rec file here. In the rec file, there is nothing except this. We set the name of our project, and everything else is derived by default. So if I do rep config, I will see all the configuration for my project. So as you can see, it found my uh, certificate for iPhone development already, so I don't have to provide it. The build system is smart. It, it, the build system assumes that I'm going to build for iOS uh, 8.4, bunch of stuff. So, let's start. Uh, because I'm very bad at this, I'm using a cheat, I'm cheating, so uh, so first we need to uh, require the gems that we are going to use. Uh, so we use uh, two gems, promotion and promotion map. They're basically Ruby DSLs for uh, IS development. So I'm requiring the gems in the rec file, but you can also put them in the we have here a gem file, you can do that and use Bundler, but I'm old school so I, I don't really know how Bundler is working, <laughs> so I use a regular gem file. So I add my gem file here, and the first thing I will do is, so by default we generate this code for you, it's basically hello world, actually I can, I can show you, if I type break, it will build the application and Okay, and this is basically what you have by default when you have nothing. So I'm going to uh, delete that, and we are going to add uh, this. Oops. We are going to create this. Uh, we are going to create a class that inherits from PM delegate, and PM is um, a module defined by the Ruby gems I'm using here. We override the onload option and we're going to open beer list screen. So I'm going to define beer list screen. But before doing that, I have to create the data for the application. So these are the data for the app. I use the pure Ruby file because I'm very lazy. Uh, as you can see, it's an array of uh, ashes. And it, each hash has uh, four keys and values. The name of uh, the beer, the name of the brewery, the URL uh, of Wikipedia page, and the latitude and longitude. Uh, it's very simple. I'm using pure Ruby, but it could be a JSON file, or um, uh, a YAML file, or a text file, or a XML files, any format you like. You can parse it, as, as long as you can parse it, of course. So I define this. Uh, so the next step is create my beer list controller. So I'm creating a new file, beer list controller, and here I am going to add this. And this is a um, class that inherits from PM table screen. So this is a screen that has a table, so a list of items. And here, the most important thing is this method, uh, table data. You override table data and you can return an array of hashes that will be basically uh, all the items of your app. And this, it expects um, an array of hashes that have title, action, argument, then a bunch of stuff. You can have images, you can have buttons, you can have subtitles. So here I'm basically um, creating this array using my, 
my beers read in my data.rb file. Uh, this, this is just a hack for IS7. Uh, we have to do that, sadly. And here, so I provide action. Action will be the name of the method that will be called when the user taps uh, one of the rows. So I use the name list tap, and here I define my method. And the argument will be the URL. The URL uh, will be the, the argument of the method. And here I can use UI application, shared application, open URL, and I can open this on the system. So this line is actually uh, iOS, an iOS API. This is not pure Ruby, this is, this is an UI application, is an Objective-C class, and all of these are actually uh, Objective-C um, uh, methods. So you can mix Ruby and, and all these calls. It's just to show you that if you, this gem is very nice because if you have to do this, uh, if you do native stuff, you can go one level down and do whatever you want. So now if I type break, I have my list of items, right? And if I click, for instance, on Orval, it will open Wikipedia. Yeah, it's working. So if I go back to my application here, and here I forgot to say, but we have a REPL here, so you can type expression, and you can basically type Ruby expressions on the fly and write code. Oops, I have to go back here. So now let's uh, continue. Where is my? Okay. Now we are going to create our map view, map screen. And the map screen is very similar to the table screen. So we have a class that inherits from PM map screen. And we have to override this method annotation data and return an array of uh, annotations. And it basically expects an array of hashes that have uh, this key. So longitude, latitude, title, action, URL, and other things. So we can even provide custom images for your annotations. And very similarly, you provide an action here, map tap, that will be called when the user selects something on the map. So now I can go to my... Uh, delegate and I can change the list as a map. So now it will it will use the map and not the list. And as you can see I have my so by default it uses the current location which is uh, Taiwan. And uh, you can zoom out. Oops. Oops. And here are the best beers. So, uh, as I said, there is one in America here, and most of them are uh, in uh, the, the low countries. So you can click on uh, this one, for instance, which would be Rochefort, or Orval, yeah, and you can click here, and it opens the Wikipedia page. So very simple, right? And finally, uh, we can now create a tab view. We want both views to be available in the application. So instead of doing open beer map screen, we will do open tab bar, beer list screen, beer map screen. And this will create a tab bar for two views. And after we do that, we need to provide um, names and icons for each of the view. So we do this by here adding this line. And here, because I'm very lazy, I'm using a system image. But normally, you should be providing a real timeline and a custom image. And if I tap break, oh, and I have my two tabs here. Simple, right? Well, this is it, so very simple app. And as you can see, then it's
It's about 44 lines of Ruby. Okay. Anyway. Um, so let's make uh, another app. We have 10 minutes, so it will be very fast. Uh, let's make a fun app. Uh, let's write a video game. So you guys know uh, Flappy Bird? Uh, we try to write Flappy Bird uh, very quickly. So let's go. Um. OK, so here I have a project already uh, pre-created. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's a motion game project, so it's a bit different than the other projects. We have a app directory uh, uh, with an um, application and a scene, and we have uh, we have config file, one for each platform, iOS and Android. And here we have resources. Where, where are my resources? Oh. Sources, basically stuff that already have. So let's go and by default it's empty. So let's do something. Now we start by initializing uh, an instance variable here, and I will define the add scanline method and the add ground method. This method basically generates two sprites uh, and keep them in this array. Uh, so we have two, two sprites, one for the skyline and one for the ground. And here I can just call this and Point if I to a type break OS simulator. What's happening here? Oh, I forgot to. So I have my, script, my layers that are moving now. And I will go very quick because we don't have much time, but I will just add the rest of the game uh, very quickly. Actually, what I can do is I can uh, I'm going, I can show you the, the real code right away because um, the, the game engine has the notion of um, gravity, so you can set the gravity of the world. Uh, you can. We have the notion of sprites. So here, bird is actually um, a small, small object that we have here, and we can have. Uh, actually, the best would be to go to the update method and just disconnect this. So this is basically most of the game without the pipes. Uh, and uh, so this is Flappy Bird, right? I'm typing on my trap pack here to make the bird fly. But here, oh yeah, game over. Uh, bird, I can access all the objects on my class. And you can, oops, this is printing stuff. You can change the position of the bird to uh, Uh, so, 
gravity, I'm going to put 0, 0, actually 0, 200. And I change the gravity, and now the bird is flying. I can put it back here. Oops. Oh. I don't know what's going on here. So you can have action, you can make the bird, oops, move to, uh, you can make the bird move up. Anyway, you can basically control the sprite as you, uh, as you write your game, it's very fun. So I don't have much time, so I have to go back to the slides. But if you want more information about this game, it's available on GitHub. Uh, Remotion, samples, and there there is a game directory, and then there is the Flappy Bird. It's only 100 lines, uh, and it's uh, again, it's all free, so you can download the Remotion. Uh, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so uh, conclusion, RubyMotion lets you write uh, cross-platform mobile apps uh, and game, and they are uh, true native apps. So from RubyMotion, you can use all the platform APIs uh, at no performance expense. So you can really go into the entire set of platform APIs. The applications are statically compiled, so there is no interpreter, there is no UV source file inside your apps. Uh, you can use cross-platform cross gems, so if you don't want to write everything in pure IS or pure Android, you can use gems to facilitate that. It's only one language, Ruby, the language you all love. Uh, so you don't, you don't need to do Java or IS or Objective-C or Swift, you use Ruby uh, everywhere. Uh, there is only one interface as well, it's your terminal and your favorite editor. So you don't have to use Xcode or Android Studio. And it's different from PhoneGap, right? Thank you very much. We have questions. We have two minutes for questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. Now, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Hello. And I wonder if is there are any differences regarding uh, single library implementations between these two iOS and Android platform? Uh, because you mentioned that uh, the Ruby Motion style library is implemented as uh, native applications for these both platforms. So, may, uh, for example, Android, some Android device, they may have, uh, say, 32-bit uh, CPU processors. So, uh, the integer type, a uh, native integer type for them may be 32-bit long, but for iOS, uh, now most of them are 64-bit. So, is there any difference, uh, for example, like, uh, the integer, mass, ma the maximum integer in these two platforms? No, no, there are no differences um, because, um, so what we do is that we rewrote um, the Ruby built-in classes for both iOS and Android and so far, so far there are very small differences. So, for instance, so when it comes to integer size, uh, Ruby has two classes, fixnum and bignum. So it is true that if you do, um, if you target a 32-bit uh, platform, uh, the fixed num range will be uh, lower, shorter than if you target a 64-bit range. But there are 32-bit devices uh, for iOS. Yeah, if you target the, the first iPads, for instance, they are 32-bit or first iPhones. So you have the same problem with iOS as well. So. As far as we know, there are no problems. Ruby is very well, um, it's pretty much agnostic. So in Ruby, normally you, you shouldn't care about the size of your, uh, the platform integers. You have fixed nums or big nums, and all the methods are available on both. So you shouldn't see any, any problem. You might have performance issues, of course, if you, uh, if you create big numbers on a 32-bit architecture, and if you have to do a lot of operation on big nums. But normally, no, uh, both platforms have uh, threads, so we implemented the same threading model. Uh, regular expression, um, Java, uh, Android uses uh, uh, the same thing that we use, ICU, 
they use ICU to implement um, uh, regular expressions, and it's actually the same project that we use for regression for iOS. So the same regular expressions can compile. Regular expressions were, was actually my, I was mo mostly scared about it, because you know, most engines are very, very different. There are different options, but it's working well. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, as I tried Ruby Motion like two years ago, there there aren't uh, sweep yet. So as the April uh, introduced the sweep and like encourage people uh, gradually move to sweep. So if do you have plan on Ruby Motion uh, change your master name or syntax accordingly um, to the sweep part? Yeah, so we definitely plan to uh, add support for Swift APIs. So right now, Ruby Motion can only call you to Objective-C APIs, C and Objective-C. And we are working on Swift support. It's on our priority list. But um, I think that we have, uh, we have time for that, because Apple is not going to replace the Objective-C APIs. Or, like for instance, all the stuff that they announced a few days ago, for the Apple TV, it's all Objective-C. Uh, so I think that, yeah, you're, pretty, you're right. In the future, uh, in the long term, uh, they will be gradually moving to Swift, even for APIs. And yeah, we'll be supporting that. Thanks. Okay, okay the gentleman from the back. Uh, the Ruby language is usually paired with a garbage collecting runtime. When you're compiling statically for iOS, is that a problem? If so, how did you resolve it? So, uh, so for Android, we don't have these problems. Android has a nice garbage collector. Uh, for iOS, uh, we don't have a garbage, well, iOS has a form of garbage collection. It's a delayed form of garbage collection. Uh, so iOS uses a written code system, and then but what they call auto-release loops, which are basically objects that keep references to these uh, objects that are about to die, and when, the, when this object dies, it releases all the other objects. It's a bit like, uh, a bit like, uh, oh, I forgot the name, it's C++, like, uh, anyway. So for when you compile for iOS, we, uh, you, we don't have determinism in garbage collection, and so all the objects that you create will be freed at one point, but you don't know exactly when, and it's up to the iOS uh, system to do that. Deal. So iOS, most, most iOS apps are run loop based, and when the run loop runs, it frees the auto-release pool, which might free your, uh, the objects you create. So it, there are, um, the main issue is with um, uh, cycles, cyclic references. In, um, so for Android, if you have two objects that refer to each other, the garbage collector is smart enough to detect that and free both objects. For iOS, it's, in, it's written based, uh, it's a written code based, and it doesn't have any garbage collector for that, so if you do that, you will leak. Which I why in iOS, you need to use weak references for that. Uh, this is the main point of uh, pain when, when doing IS development. And this is true for uh, Swift and uh, Objective-C as well. So for Ruby Motion, we provide a class for that, WeekRef. It has the exact same API as the Ruby uh, standard library, and uh, we recommend to use it. Uh, but this is mostly the same, the, the main issue. When it comes to uh, memory management, uh, it's, it behaves like, like as if there was a garbage collector, because it's a delayed form of garbage collection. Okay, great. Um, that's all we have for the time today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to go to find him after the event or uh, during our tea time section. Okay. Uh,